Please take your seats. So I hereby call to order the seventh meeting of the 62nd session of the Student Senate at 7.03. With that, we'll move into section one, or section two, sorry, roll call. When I call your name, please answer with either present or here. Senator Babin. Present. Senator Bradley. Senator Brown. Senator Coates is not here. Senator Castillo. Present. Senator Cowden. Present. Senator Cunningham. Present. Senator Day. Present. Senator Azil. Present. Senator Flores. Present. Senator Gibson. Present. Senator Glover. Present. Senator Hopper. Here. Senator James. Here. Senator Kata. Senator Kahindi. Senator Kendrick. Present. Senator Kahn. Present. Senator Lube. Here. Senator Majors. Present. Senator Matson. Present. Senator Miller. Present. Senator Morgan. Present. Senator Mounts. Present. Senator Navarro. Present. Senator Nazir. Present. Senator Wynn. Present. Senator Njau. Senator Peterson. Present. Senator Reed. Senator Sanchez. Here. Senator Spencer. Present. Senator Tehran. Present. Senator Tubak. Present. Senator Tucker. Present. Senator Wang. Present. Senator Webb. Present. Senator Wright. Present. Senator Zacharias is excused. Sorry about that. So we have met quorum with 33 total in attendance. Simple majority is 18. Two-thirds of present will be 22. Two-thirds majority will be 30. Moving into Section 3, approval of the minutes. Are there any corrections to be noted for the minutes of last week? Senator Azeel. Uh, motion to amend the minutes. Just identify which one. Um, under public public forum letter M, my last name is spelled wrong. That is E Z E L L, correct? Yes. And that's for her. Um, under unfinished business, section D, number two. Your name again. Um, E Z E L L. Well, no, I was asking if yeah. that was a correction to your name again. Yeah, correction to my name again. Are there any other corrections to the minutes to be noted? See none, we'll make that correction. Senator Wright. A motion to add FB-62-005 to the agenda under new business. Could you speak a little bit to the bill so we understand what we are voting uh, on? Yes, yeah, so we, th this was um, approved um, over a week ago, but we just had to make one minor correction to it, so we pulled it and now we're putting it back on. Does require a second. Second. Senator Matson with the second. It's not debatable. 
All those in favor of adding this to the agenda for tonight, please raise your hand and hold them high. All opposed? What was the number again, Senator Wright? Thank you. Motion has carried, and we'll get that added. Senator Mounts. With the motion, um, I motion to add SB 6258, repeal of R62001 to new business. Hasn't come out of committee yet. Yeah, she has to do it if it's coming out of her committee. I rescind my, or I rescind my motion. Thank you. Um, Senator motion, Khan. Motion to pull out, or what's the wording for it? What? Commit um, SB-62-058 out of the committee. Could you explain a little bit about the bill so we know what we're voting on? All right. So this bill is basically regarding the um, Supreme Court. Uh, so there was a previous bill pa passed that basically put a time limit on how much work, you know, or actually... He's right here. Can he speak on it? It's much easier for you. You may yield your time to another individual, yes. I yield my time to Senator Mounts. So during the first meeting of the session, we uh, the Senate passed R62001, a commitment to revitalize the Supreme Court. Um, it set out a time frame that we were supposed to have something uh, presented to the Senate by this meeting. Uh, that has not happened, as the two senators who wrote the bill are no longer in the Senate. Basically, this bill is repealing that resolution and then also committing to um, have, a, have a new time frame um, and also have new people looking over it. So the new, basically the new people dealing with this situation will be the Ways and Means Committee. Now that we have a little understanding, is there a second? Senator Miller with the second. All those in favor of adding this item to tonight's agenda, please raise your hand and hold them high. All opposed, same sign. Motion carries, receiving 32 in favor. With that, we'll move into section four. Public forum. I know the agenda I had sent out had a, the student section wishing to speak. They have contacted me just prior to this meeting saying they will not be able to attend. They will be here uh, next week to give that presentation. However, let me run through my spiel right quick. <clears throat> so public forum provides a chance for individuals to have the privilege of speaking before the Senate. This is a time for the association to listen to what the community has to say, and to that we offer our undivided respect and attention. I would like to remind everyone that although we allow the speakers the privilege to use this platform, the opinions of the speakers do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the association or the university. Lastly, in the essence of time, we do limit speeches in public forum to a length of three minutes unless the speaker has spoken to us about it ahead of time. That being said, we do have another individual here who has requested time. Daniel, if you would like to approach the podium, please. Good evening, everyone. Um, to introduce myself, I'm Daniel Bogle. I'm the Director of Operations for the Student Veterans Organization here on campus. I just have a couple of public announcements to make on events that we have coming up and to invite you all to. Um, first one being Friday, we have our annual SVO Shocker Ruck, Carry the Burden Shocker Ruck. Um, we will leave Grace Wilkie at 1 o'clock on Friday and march the perimeter of the campus. Um, just in support of, of carry the burden of students and veterans alike. Um, and then our next one will be October 4th. 
we will have a chili cook-off. Um, some of you attended that last year. We're doing it again this year. Uh, we do have a judge in attendance here tonight that's going to judge for us. Thank you for that, ma'am. Um, so there'll be three ca categories at the chili cook-off. We'll have normal, spicy, and I hope you're ready for that, uh, and vegetarian. So um, if anyone you want to submit chili into the chili cook-off, there will be prizes for the top winner of all, all three categories. Um, another event I want to touch base on, this is in work, um, but I wanted to bring it up to see if there's any possible collaboration or if you guys have any ideas you could bring to us. Um, so for 16 days leading up to uh, Veterans Day, we're going to lay 22 fl U.S. flags down in certain plots around campus. Uh, the 16 days was going to equal up to 354 flags altogether. What this represents is the 22 is the veteran suicide rate currently, and the 354 is the current military active duty suicide rate. So we're trying to raise awareness for both veterans and military active duty by doing this event. So if anyone would like to collaborate on that or has any ideas on that event, um, it's still in work. Uh, we're still trying to get to the nuts and bolts of it, but feel free to reach out to me or swing by Grace Wilkie 105 and come talk to us with any ideas you have for that event. Uh, with that, I'll stand for any questions. Are there any questions for the speaker? Um, this is just an idea of who to partner with. Um, CAPS, I think, would be a good idea, yes. Counseling and Prevention um, Services. I know that I just talked to them out there, and they've done a lot with suicide awareness and um, trainings as well, so that might be. And they are on the third floor of the Grace Wilkie? Is that the CAPS? Yes, yeah. yes. Yep. Yep. Right. Thank you. Yep, you're welcome. Any other questions for the speaker? Seeing none, thank you for your time. <coughs> At this time, is there anyone else wishing to speak in public forum? Student advocate. Thank you. I just I would have saved this for remarks and announcements. Do I have to stand up there? To the podium, please. So. Sorry about that. Um, I would save this for remarks and announcements, but I do have to leave early. So um, I just wanted to say thank you for everyone that came to the event um, before our meeting today and for showing your support and for mingling with the departments that came so that they were at least able to have people that received their information and so it made it worthwhile for them to come and to meet you all. So I appreciate your effort in that. And then also we have a bunch of leftover food. So after the meeting or if you end up taking a recess, it's all in the Senate suite, in the fridge and on the back table. So don't buy extra food. We have a bunch for like the rest of the week. And that's all. Would you like to take questions? Not, are there any questions? Seeing none, thank you for your time. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in public forum at this time? Seeing none, we'll move into section five, officer reports. Item A, president. Hello, everybody. Sorry I wasn't here last week. Um, as Vice President Berth mentioned last week, I was at the Kansas Board of Regents meeting um, all day Wednesday, and then I got a breakfast with the Regents Thursday morning, so I just stayed the night there. Um, so about that, um, during the board meeting, I attended the Academic Affairs um, Committee meeting. One of the big things that stood out to me from that meeting that I wanted to share with you all is that they are making changes um, to qualified admissions. So what it previously was, was to apply for college. Um, you had to have an ACT of 21 or higher, or you had to be high, what do you, top third of your class, thank you. Um, but now they have changed it to a 21 ACT or higher, or a cumulative GPA of a 2.25. So this is a lot better for, especially like first generation students. Um, anybody who's looking to go to college, it's just a lot easier for students to be able 
to be accepted. Um, so that's really awesome. And then also there was a website that I found out about that I think would be of interest to all of you and for you to all share with your constituents. It's called ksdegreestats.org. And it's... Um, it was created by the Board of Regents, and it shows you all of the fees, so tuition, fees, whatever, your major fees from your university, how much on average that position that you hope to get after you graduate with your degree makes, and then it shows you the balance of how much you're paying for school and then how much you're going to make in your future career. So that's something really interesting so you can balance for incoming students, they can view, you know, how much I'm going to be paying for school and how much I'm going to be making in the future. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Um, as for the actual meeting of the regents, um, they're, they shared that it's going to be a $50 million ask this year for the Regent schools um, for higher education. Um, and so as a part of the Student Advisory Committee, um, or Council, sorry, we are going to start developing relationships with our legislators more, so trying to meet with them. So whenever we go for Higher Education Day um, and, you know, in support lobbying for that fifty million dollar ask um, we actually have a relationship already established with that legislator so it's not just hey give me money it's a hey how was your vacation I hope it was well now we can talk about business you know providing that extra relationship will really pressure a little bit maybe help you know um, with the ask, so because if we do a fifty, if we get a full fifty dollar, fifty million dollar ask, um, tuition will more than likely remain flat for next year. Um, and during the SAC committee, we discussed um, other goals like promoting OERs, which are open educational resources, and then the meetings with our legislators. Um, also today, I had the Health and Wellness Committee. Um, our next meeting will be November 6th at 2 p.m. We don't have a room quite yet, so whenever I find that room, I will let you all know. Um, I heard a lot of different questions that some of you were asking during the presentation from the Heskett Center today during Wellness Wednesday. Um, like I mentioned in that little presentation, those questions would be a great would be great to ask during the health and wellness committee. Um, so I really recommend you attending those or inviting your constituents to attend those as well. Um, and then just committees in general, we still need students on these committees. So please, please, please apply yourself or invite your constituents to apply. Um, so now for the treasurer. Um, so this is what Treasurer um, Osterman sent me. So given some of the concerns raised last meeting about access to the application for applicants to individual funding, I have created a document with all of the past and current applicants and their relevant application materials. We tried to send this document out with our funding bills, but I was unable to file I was unable to as the file was too large. I'm working on uploading it to our Student Government Association Shocker Sync so that any senator can reference it for our funding bills. I hope to accomplish this by the next Senate meeting. Um, as for Chief of Operations Lepetsky, um, National Voter Registration Day, um, we had a great turnout. There was 293 people who registered to vote or updated the registration. Um, and then compared to six other universities also running a similar event, our numbers were over twice as high for students to register to vote. So that's awesome. Um, and then thank you to everyone who helped volunteer at the event, and that was there. And then Director of Public Relations, Haas. Um, so SGA week is in full swing. Please remember that Know Your Rights Night is tomorrow at 6 p.m. It's in Hubbard Hall, room 211. <laughs> we are hosting Brandon Johnson to speak on your rights in the community as well as student conduct and the student advocate to speak on your rights as students. It will be an, an informational night and there will be snacks and a question and answer period after the speakers. Please spread the word and bring your friends. And then once again, we have tons of food left over in the office, so please eat the food after the meeting. That's it.
Are there any questions for the president? Senator Tubak. So going way back to the admissions requirements at the very beginning, was there any discussion of getting rid of the ACT score requirement at all or lowering it? No, there's not. Um, it's ACT of 21 or higher or the GPA of 2.25. Um, so if you don't get a 21 on your ACT, if you have a 2.25 GPA, you're still, you still meet those requirements. So, Senator Peterson. Um, so it, would that be able to, um, would students be able to, as a follow-up to that question, um, not take the ACT, or is it still a requirement to take the ACT as part of admissions? Do you know? I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I guess So listen, I would always recommend people to do both um, just because, you know, when you th and I am not an admissions person, but I'm going to explain this the best way that I can and based on how it was explained to me. Um, so admissions reps would look at both of them. Um, and so if for some reason the GPA is a little bit lower, but the ACT is a little bit higher, um, then they're able to still potentially admit a student um, and then vice versa if the GPA is a little higher with ACT is a little lower um, so I think a good rule of thumb and this is totally me being like a student affairs professional is to do both just because more options help you ideally with um, admission into the university and I think it goes for like any college it's not just us but again don't quote me that because I'm not an admissions rep Senator Turan um, just like a follow up to that, just like kind of point of reference, I suppose, is like they do use your ACT score to put you in certain classes, like whether it be comp or your certain math classes. So that's just placement wise, I think you do need. Plus, it would always help with scholarships, too. So, Senator Bevan. Is it ACT score alone or can it be SAT equivalent? Do you know? I think it can be SAT equivalent. Do not quote me on that. I am not 100% sure. But as for the regents, it's the ACT 21 or the GPA. Yeah. Senator Webb, do you still have a question? Uh, you kind of touched on this, but could you just restate, do you, if you know, what was the motivation for that? Um. So it's making it easier for students to come to college. Um, like I mentioned, it's like for first generation students, um, class rank is very like trivial, I guess, um, because school sizes, you know, I went, I graduated with 65 people and I know that there are some of you out here who graduated with hundreds. So my class rank is going to be very, very different than your class rank. So it just more of a like level playing field I guess and plus it's over a longer period of time rather than Chief of Operations Lepetsky can speak on this better she yeah. sorry I really enjoyed this part of it um so what I saw as their motivation behind it was they're seeing I think the number was there's 65 percent of in-state Kansans going to college but why isn't the other half doing it um I know they're still looking into as like a long term getting more personable with those students who aren't going to college on why it could be affordability etc but also when it comes to um certain things in high school um that people have to go through especially with first generational or other students who've had to go through traumatic traumatic events that affect their schoolwork I think that's why they cut out the one-third and they're really trying to get that um, percentage up for Kansas students to go into higher education and I think that was their motivation behind it and I know they're gonna look deeper like I said into why specifically people aren't going to college and um, do more research on that and I think that's why they're still stuck on like making it official that makes sense Any other questions for the president? Seeing none, we'll move into item B, vice president's report. <coughs> How we doing? All right, so I'm gonna start off by kind of like, you know, 
showing this. This one is already uploaded to Shocker Sync, so you can go ahead and take a look at it. Uh, anybody watching can do it. You guys yourselves can pull it up right now. But what this is is a list of uh, sustainability goals that the steering committee alongside the student group that I have been mentioning for the past couple weeks uh, came up with for the university's sustainability plan. Uh, in that meeting, then that was last Friday on the, the 20th, uh, discussed the goals, uh, which you can review at your leisure. But after the goals, we kind of brainstormed a few things and what the students themselves can start getting involved in and what different areas of uh, departments or areas of the university can start working on certain things. So what we have uh, as options to look into are community garden, composting, sustainability training that would be re either required or offered for faculty and students orgs, uh, conservation signage for all of the conservation efforts that are around but are a little less aware that they are there, uh, to include some you know, reminders about water usage and things when you're in bathrooms or in the showers, stuff like that. Uh, more recycling drop-off areas, additional bike racks, which uh, computer labs, and for that one we're talking about e-waste. So if you leave the computer kind of running all day, how much does that do? Uh, if you leave it running overnight as well. So having kind of shut off procedures put in place for various things. Uh, water bottle filling stations, I'm sure you've seen some in place here in the RSC as well as other of the newer buildings, but kind of spreading those around. Uh, mitigating, you know, single use plastics and uh, food waste prevention programs such as Shocker Share a Meal, which is if you as a student org uh, have food and leftover food, you can uh, uh, let it be known through this service. Uh, it's typically done with catering. Whenever you make a catering order, you can select the option that when they come and pick up the food, they are allowed to have anybody come and pick it up. I, I forget what app they use to broadcast that out. Um, but if you are having an event that doesn't use the university catering, you can also go to catering and, and tell them about it and tell them when your end time is and they will come pick up the food and do the same. Uh, so those are basically everything that kind of came out of that meeting. Uh, as was mentioned, we do have SGA week. It has been ongoing. And again, I want to shout out to all of the senators who have been helping and to those who have attended. Um, and then Dan came in and stole my other point. So I won't talk about that. Any questions for me on my report? With that, we'll move into section six, other reports. Item A, academics, committee chair. Hey, good evening, everybody. Um, I just wanted to start out by th saying thank you for appointing me as the academic committee chair. Um, since this is so recent to me, right now, currently, I am just learning the role of being the chair for that committee and working on that, uh, a current update on my committee meeting. We did not meet quorum today, so there's nothing that I can speak on more about that. Any questions for the chair? Seeing none, we'll move into item B. Well, safety and student services chair is not here. I do believe her report is submitted to the record. Uh, so we will move into item C. Yep. Senator Tubak. Uh, Senator Zacharias asked me to speak in her behalf. Is that allowed? Yes, by all means, come up. Hi, everybody. So, unfortunately, we did not meet quorum today, so we were unable to meet. Um, but, uh, as many of you know, the safety walk had to be postponed uh, last night. Uh, we're looking at a date two weeks from yesterday, which will be October 8th. We don't know if all parties can attend yet, so we'll let you guys know uh, when we can do that. Also, uh, the chairperson and I were wanting to meet with uh, City Councilman 
Brandon Johnson to discuss some issues with the crosswalks that I've had earlier. But are there any questions? Are there any questions? Senator Mounts. I don't know if you stated this, but do you have a replacement date for the safety walk? So we're looking at October 8th, which is two weeks from yesterday, but we don't know if all parties can attend yet. Are there any other questions at this time? Senator Babin. When you say crosswalks, what are you talking about? Right, okay. So within the committee, we've been talking about um, just some general points of concern for safety. And uh, I've been in contact with uh, the city councilman for a while talking about the crosswalks on 17th Street or the lack thereof. And uh, so we're trying to get a, a conversation started on that and see what we can do because it's not within the jurisdiction of Wichita State. It's within the city. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you very much. Uh, now we will move into item C, diversity, empowerment, and inclusion chair. All righty. Um, so it was a slow week again, unfortunately. Uh, however, uh, we are moving along with uh, getting our required university trainings uh, set up. So. Uh, I met with Daniel Johnson and Alicia Sanchez uh, again today, um, and we were just kind of uh, discussing how we might go about doing these meetings and when we're going to go when we're going to do them. Um, I need to get back in contact with the student advocate, but it looks like we're probably going to be doing these sometime in November, just because uh, ODI is a little slow during that time, and so they actually can focus on making sure we get those trainings and make sure we get all of them correctly. Um, the idea is we're going to split into two groups uh, and each do a separate training, do lunch, and then uh, basically switch and do the other training. Uh, each one should be about an hour and a half long to two hours. Um, so that's the current plan. I will keep you updated on that. Um, other than that, we met, my committee met last Thursday and drafted the statement regarding the SLB incident. It still has not been released. Uh, we are hope I am meeting with the DPR directly after the meeting to discuss how we're going to do that. Um, and then basically this week I talked with Gabe and uh, we discussed um, on our, during our one-on-one -on -one, uh, kind of what we want to see this, com where, where we want to see my committee go. Uh, and so that is something I relate to my committee today. And then in our meeting, uh, we crafted a mission statement, which I will send out to all of my members um, in, a, in a formal writing uh, and discuss some goals. Other than that, uh, I am, am open for questions. Are there any questions for the chair? Senator Matson. Out of curiosity, have the topics for trainings in November been decided yet? Or are those still uh, up in the air? So for the first four hours of the eight that we need, um, it, we are most likely doing gender diversity training and safe zone training. Uh, other than that, we're still deciding which other ones we're going to do. Um, most likely we will be doing green zone training as well. Are there any other questions for the chair? Senator Peterson. Will these trainings be able to be held um, like are they going to be during the weeks, days, or are they going to be similar to previous training that we had on the weekend? So the idea is to have it on a weekend just because sort of like how we did the retreat um, that fits in with the schedule of uh, the workers and people who are able to actually do the trainings at ODI. Um, and with the time frame and the time commitment, it just seems better to do it on a weekend very far in advance. So we make sure we don't plan anything on that weekend. Um, so that's kind of the idea is kind of do like a Senate retreat, but for our trainings in November. Senator Babin. Just to clarify, these aren't required if you get your Senate, you get your training hours in another form, correct? Gabe? We have two different things. So there's a clause in the um, bylaws that no, yeah, the bylaws that require that all elected or appointed officials of the association um, have to complete eight hours of training um, by a certain date. Um, so these are separate than your senator hours. They're an additional requirement that are placed on senators, um, Supreme Court justices, and then cabinet members. And that could be over no fewer than three different trainings. 
Before we get to your follow-up, Senator, Senator Day. Yes. Um, is there a particular reason the statement regarding that incident hasn't come out yet? Because it's been about a week and a half, I believe, if not mistaken. Um, so we crafted it on Thursday. I did not get confirmation for all my members until uh, that they agreed with the statement until a, was it Friday or Saturday? I don't quite remember. Uh, and then I had submitted it to the DPR on Monday and then ha had a meeting with Gabe on Tuesday about uh, the latest changes that we needed to make regarding legality and other th and legality and the stance of our committee. Senator Babin. So my question was specifically about the trainings offered in November, whether it is required to attend those specifically or if we just can get them through other trainings through the university. Yeah, sure. If you've already, if you meet your own hours, then th no, this would not be. This is kind of just provide the opportunity of getting everyone together in one place and us helping you coordinate it. But if you have ac uh, accomplished, completed some of those hours already since you were elected or appointed, then those will count to it. And if you hit your eight, you hit your eight. Um, but I think this effort is to try to kind of us help you all set up or help us to help you all set up the legwork of coordinating it and then letting you know when we're gonna do them. But if you've already hit, hit your eight or have done that training, um, since you've been appointed or confirmed, then you don't have to worry about doing it. Sorry about that. Any other questions for the chair? Seeing none, we'll move into item D, ways and means chair. All right, hi everyone. So today, Ways and Means Committee, we met the quorum and we only briefly discussed, you know, what we want to do in that committee, you know, just introduce the ideas, what we will be doing. And we were just getting a hold of how to run the committee, basically. So that's all I have to say. And I'm ready for any questions. Are there any questions for the chair? Senator Peterson. What were some of the ideas you guys just uh, discussed? I am glad you asked. So uh, some of the things we will be working on are, you know, going into uh, back into the, you know, governing journals and looking at the processes of, you know, how the Supreme Court works, Senate Review Board, um, the emeritus status. I, I'm sorry, I struggle with that word. Um, status process, um, looking at how student organizations are, you know, just make how we can, you know, take away their status and all that stuff. Um, and also the succession clause. So those are a few ideas that I discussed with Gabe and I think it's a good starting point for this committee. Are there any other questions for the chair? Seeing none, we'll move into <coughs> section seven, appointments. Item A, Chief Shall Read. SB-62-054, appointing university committee member, authored by Katrina Miller, student body president. Action first, appoint a member to the ICCA Board of Directors Committee. I hereby nominate Josh Nichols to this committee. Josh demonstrated in his interview a passion for student representation within this committee and will be strong advocating voice for students. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? So Josh will be a great advocate for students within this committee as he is passionate about working with athletics and he will be a great member um, of the ICCA Board of Directors. Are there any questions for the author? Seeing none, does the nominee wish to speak to this bill?
Hello, I'm Josh Nichols. I'm a, this is my fourth year here at Wichita State. I'm a marketing major. I used to be a senator in the 60th session, and I was an election commissioner in the 59th and the 60th session. I currently work in the athletic department as a marketing intern, and I love athletics. I love interacting with all the athletes, and I'm willing to answer any question you have. Are there any questions for the nominee? Seeing none, the nominee may either stay or leave for debate. <clears throat> Thank you. Moving into the debate period, is there anyone wishing to speak in debate at this time? Senator Wright. A motion to adopt by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, SB-62-054 is adopted with unanimous consent of the Senate. Moving into item B, yes, Chief shall read. I know. SB-62-055, appointing Senate standing committee members, authored by Michael Berth, President of the Senate. Action first, appoint member of the Diversity, Empowerment, and Inclusion Committee. I hereby nominate Tao Nguyen to the position of Diversity, Empowerment, and Inclusion Committee member. Sorry, guys. Action second, appoint member of the Academics Committee. I hereby nominate Emily Awaro to the position of Academics Committee member. Action third, appoint members of the Safety and Student Services Committee. I hereby nominate Lee Wang and Chris Najau to the positions of Safety and Student Services Committee member. Action fourth, appoint members of the Ways and Means Committee. I hereby nominate Tayton Majors, Jordan Glover, and Joe Luby to the positions of Ways and Means Committee member. As the author, I would like to speak a little bit to it. Um, so th these are uh, pointing some of the new individuals and in spread loading what we have across the committees that are needing it. Um, one is a graduate, and we are slightly required to have a graduate in every committee. And so while that individual did request another committee, there was already a graduate there. So I thought better to place in their second option rather than doubling up. That way we spread load our graduates. Uh, for the rest, it was either they hadn't told me which one they were in yet, and so we can't have senators not in a standing committee, and so I'm appointing, or they have actually contacted me and said, hey, I'm not in a committee yet. I would like to be in this one, and so this is what we've come up with, and I do stand for questions if there are any. Seeing none, we'll move into the debating period. Senator Mounts. Motion to pass by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, SB-62-055 is adopted with unanimous consent of the Senate. <laughs> Moving into item C, Chief shall read. SB-62-056, appointing government relations committee member, authored by Katrina Miller, student body president. Action first, appoint the position of government relations committee member. I hereby nominate Olivia Babin to this position. Olivia is a hard worker and is passionate about working with this committee to advocate for higher education. Her previous experience working for a U.S. congressman candidate and her goals for this committee will make her a great member to the government relations committee. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? No. Does the nominee wish to speak to this bill? Sure. Yeah, so I'm Olivia. Um, I am a senior majoring political, political science and journalism, so I do have a 
pretty good understanding of the way that government works, especially our state legislature. Uh, I did work with the state legislature while I was in uh, high school in Topeka for two years, um, as well as I did work for a U.S. congressional candidate, and I did um, review legislation and write a few pieces of myself. I am open for questions. Are there any questions for the nominee? Are there appointees out here? Seeing none, we'll move into debate on this item. Is there anyone wishing to speak in debate at this time? Senator Matson. I move to adopt by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, SB-62-056 is adopted with unanimous consent of the Senate. <laughs> Moving into item D, the chief shall read. SB-62-057, appointing the position of Applied Study Senator, authored by Katrina Miller, student body president. Action first, appoint the position of Applied Study Senator. I hereby nominate Kate Miller to this position. Kate will make an excellent senator as she hopes to help support current students and future students too. Her desire to make campus a rewarding place for all shockers makes her a wonderful addition to SGA. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? As we currently have no one in the position of Applied Studies Senator, Kate will play an essential role within SGA. Her passion for being a voice for, for her constituents is something we currently need and will help ensure accurate representation of all students. Are there any questions for the author? Seeing none, does the nominee wish to speak to this bill? I'm a sophomore and my major oh. <laughs> okay. um, I'm very grateful for this opportunity and I hope to make a good impact on students now and then students in the future. Any questions? Are there any questions for the nominee? Senator Nazir? Um, so what would you plan on doing to help support current and future students? Um, I would try and like ask around and see if there's anything like a certain topic that students are interested in improving and then come back and think of an idea here. Senator Mounts. Uh, what kind of involvement do you have within the School of Applied Studies? Um, I recently just switched my major this semester so not much but planning on getting more involved. Are there any other questions? Senator Nazir. Um, so have you seen personally any issues that students face or anything that you want to bring to SGA? I know a big topic is parking. So maybe, I know that'll take a while to process, but maybe help get some ideas. Any other questions for the nominee? Seeing none, the nominee may either stay or leave for debate. Moving into debate on this item, is there anyone wishing to speak in debate at this time? Senator Peterson. I would like to speak in favor of this nominee. I have the pleasure of living with her every day, and I've also kind of tried to get her in more um, uh, she showed interest in SGA as soon as she heard that I was involved with it, and that outreach alone um, striked her to be more inclined to be involved. And, yeah, she's brand new to Applied Studies, but as uh, President Miller said, we don't have any involvement in that currently, so anything's better than nothing. Um, and I think she will do a, play a great role in this senator position. 
Is there anyone else wishing to speak in debate at this time? Senator Nazir, I got you next. Um, I'm going to vote in favor of this nominee. I think since she is new to the College of Applied Studies, I feel like she'll be a fresh mindset, and I think that'll be a great addition to SGA. Senator Tehran, do you still have a debate? Yeah. So I would like, encur like to encourage you all to vote in favor of appointing Kate Miller. She's extremely kind and will bring you know, like really radiant um, positivity to this Senate, and I think she'd be great. And um, although she is new to the applied studies, yes, um, she this is her way of getting involved, and I think that this is a great position for her to speak her mind, so she will do great. Is there anyone else wishing to speak in debate at this time? Seeing none, we'll move into the voting period. On All those in favor, please raise your hand and hold them high. All opposed, same sign. SB-62-057 has passed its two-thirds majority requirement with 33 total in favor, zero against, and 11 abstentions. <laughs> Moving into Section 8, Unfinished Business, Item A, Chief shall read. SB-62-048, grant recognition to the Pre-Optometry Student Association. As a reminder, we talked about this last week, and so if there are no questions, we'll move directly into the debating period. Is there anyone wishing to debate at this time? Senator Mounts. I move to pass by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, SB-62-048 has passed with unanimous consent of the Senate. <laughs> Moving into Section 9, New Business, Item A, Chief shall read. FB-62-006, authored by... Colleen Osterman, SGA Treasurer, Organizational Funding. Sponsored by Budget and Finance Committee. Does so. the author wish to speak to this bill? No. It's okay. Can you hear me? Sorry. No. I <laughs> Thank you. Are there any questions for the Treasurer? Senator Mount. What is the total left in organizational funding pool after this bill is passed? Um, it should be around, sorry, I have the number for today in. Um, $14,050 is what it, what it will be after today. Are there any other questions? Oh, sorry, that's for this semester. So, mm -hmm. in total, it's, um, sorry, <laughs> now I have to do it again, $29,050. There you go. <laughs> Thank you. Are there any other questions for the treasurer? Seeing none. We'll move into debate on this item. Is there anyone wishing to debate at this time? Seeing none, we'll move into the voting period. All those in favor, please raise your hand and hold them high. All opposed, same sign. Moving 
With that, FB-62-006 has passed its simple majority requirement with 33 in favor, zero against, and 11 abstentions. Moving into item B, Chief shall read. FB-62-005, individual funding authored by Colleen Osterman, SGA Treasurer, sponsored by Budget and Finance Committee. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? No. Are there any questions for the Treasurer? Seeing none, please turn off your mic, Treasurer Osterman. I lost my spot. Seeing no questions, we'll move into debate. Is there anyone wishing to debate on this item at this time? Senator Wright. A motion to adopt by unanimous consent. Any objections? Seeing none, FB-62-005 has been adopted with unanimous consent of the Senate. Moving into item C, Chief shall read. SB-62-058, repeal of R-62-001, authored by Aaron Mounts, DI Chair, sponsored by Crystal Zacharias, SSS Chair. Does the author wish to speak to this bill? I apologize uh, when working with this with Gabe, we decided it would best to do each action with a resolution format. Uh, so action one, repeal R62001 commitment to revitalize the Supreme Court. Whereas R62001 requires the 62nd session to reevaluate the structure and culture of the court with the formation of an ad hoc committee to facilitate the changes with recommendations to be presented by the final meeting of September 2019. And whereas the original officers are no longer sitting members of the Senate and the original language of the resolution was not representative of the issues with the court and therefore be it resolved that the 62nd session hereby repeals R62001. Action two, commit to solidify the Supreme Court's position in SGA, whereas a stable government should have three functioning branches, and whereas the current SGA governing documents lack clear definitions of the position and duties of the Supreme Court, and whereas there are significant issues regarding the balance of power in SGA, and therefore be it, further res or be it resolved that the 62nd session of student government commits to have a finalized plan that will be presented to the Senate by the Ways and Means Committee by the final meeting of October 2019. Are there any questions for the author? Seeing none, we'll move into the debating period. Is there anyone wishing to speak in debate at this time? Seeing none, we'll move into the voting period. All those in favor, please raise your hand and hold them high. All opposed? Sorry, there was an error in my calculation sheet. <clears throat> so SB-62-058 has passed its two-thirds of present requirement with 33 total in, in favor, zero against, and 11 abstentions. <clears throat> Moving into section 10, if I can get... Ms. Miller, to come up.
raise your hand and repeat after me. I hereby swear. I hereby swear that I will faithfully serve. That I will faithfully serve the students of Wichita State University. The students of Wichita State University. Act in accordance with. Act in accordance with. The Student Government Association Constitution. The Student Government Association Constitution. And fulfill all duties and responsibilities. And fulfill all duties and responsibilities. Required of the Office of. Required of the Office of Applied Studies. I will. I will. To the best of my ability. To the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend. Preserve, protect, and defend. The Constitution of the Student Government Association. The Constitution of the Student Government Association. Of Wichita State University. Of Wichita State University. Congratulations. Thank you. Don't have to shake your hand. So, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. With that, we'll move into section 11, remarks and announcements. Are there any remarks and announcements at this time? Senator Brown. Hello. Um, so um, I'm just going to speak on like, so Alpha Phi Alpha, we're having a week. Well, this is our week two along with SGA. So um, we're having an event tomorrow. It's in, well, I don't know where it's at, but I can I can put it in the Facebook. So, um, yeah, we're having an event tomorrow, and we're also having on Saturday, we're having a basketball tournament with the um, with Alpha Cap Alpha. Um, it's in Hubbard, not Hubbard. Um, it's in Heskett. So um, if you guys come out and support, you know, and, you know, give us some money, that would be great. Thank you. <laughs> Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Mounts. Um, if I could have Senator Castillo, Senator Spencer, and Senator Wynn approach after the meeting is over, I need to get your email so I can actually make sure you're getting my email and messages and things like that. Senator Kendrick. Um, I have a flyer for Celebrate 366. This is a community baby shower um, for um, basically Northeast Wichita. So if you have any constituents who are families, mothers, fathers, caregivers. This is an event in which they can win gift certificates, um, learn about resources. Basically, this is to address the infant mortality in our community. Kansas is one of the highest rates of infant mortality. And so our committee basically um, addresses those issues, those disparities that speak to this um, disproportionate rate of infant mortality. You could take a picture of this flyer. I'll also post it in the Facebook group, but please share this with your constituents. Thank you. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Wayne. So I work for a nonprofit called Storytime Village. This week, this Friday from 10 to 12, there's an event it's called Hoop for Literacy. So police department and sheriff department going to come out and then play basketball against each other. And then we have all the third graders from USD, USD 259. If you want to come here, help them, distribute book to them when they exit the building, that'd be great. I will post the information online as well. Senator Flores, do you still have a remark? The Wichita State debate team has a tournament this weekend in Lexington, Kentucky, and we have a 12-hour drive there. So wish us luck and also wish us a safe drive. It's going to be rough. <laughs> President Miller. Um, so I'm in Mortar Board, and on Monday we have our social event right in front of the geology building. Um, we're going to have cornhole and I think Freddy's ice cream there also um, from 5 to 7 p.m. So you should definitely go. That's awesome. And then for the month of October, we're doing a book drive, too, for um, – Young young adult books and children's books, so new or gently used, you can uh, drop those off in SI, ODI, um, SGA office, and then we also have tabling um, times as well that you can drop off those books. Thanks. Senator Turan. Hi, I'm going to um, plug ACS one more time. It's the American Chemical Society. 
Um, at our Monday meetings in McKinley 107, we have guest speakers most of the time. Um, would be like people within the chem or bio department talking about research. It is a degree requirement, and not a lot of people start thinking about it till their senior year. And we're trying to make it known so that you can get ahead of the game. And you know, you have a lot of things going on in those last years. So just trying to, you know, help everyone out. So tell your constituents or anyone that could benefit from that, and um, as well as other events that we have going on. We talk about those meetings. Thank you. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Babin. So I'm a member of Gamma Phi Beta Sorority here on campus, and we are hosting our annual Moon Ball event, which is a um, volleyball tournament. Uh, and I would love to see an SGA team. I think that would be pretty cool. So if anyone is interested in playing volleyball for Girls on the Run, uh, let me know, and I can help you guys set that up. That'd be awesome. Senator Webb. So just in case uh, those of you who I emailed earlier this week don't check your email as often as you probably should, just a reminder, um, can I see Senator Kendrick, Morgan, Wright, Spencer, Tucker, and Peterson at the front for just a few minutes after the meeting? Thanks. DPR Haas. Hi, guys. Um, could I just have a show of hands of who all is planning on to come to the Know Your Rights Night event tomorrow night? At 6 o'clock in Hubbard Hall 211. Amazing. Thank you, guys. Um, just keep pushing it. Keep talking about it. Bring your friends. I have flyers, so if you guys want some flyers, come see me. Um, I will also be, past, or I guess, just setting them on tables wherever I go. So <laughs> there we go. Senator Day. Yes, and this is slightly unusual because I'm actually not a member of this organization, but there was a deadline for an application I, I thought I should bring up. It's the uh, Ambassador for Diversity and Inclusion. The deadline to apply for that position is next Tuesday, and I thought I should bring that up. Also, please turn on your Senator hours for the love of the Lord above. Thank you, Senator D. Senator Nazir. Um, I have a question for DPR Haas. Um, for the, I know you have the flyers out. Um, have you, po I haven't checked yet, but have you posted that to like different social medias? Because I know a lot of people like find a lot of things out from like people putting it on their stories and whatnot. Yeah, so I posted it on our Instagram twice. I just posted today again about it, but I did post last week about it um, and on our Twitter as well twice. And Facebook was posted this morning as well. So, yeah. Senator Turan. Okay, yeah, one last plug. Um, WCU Halo um, is hosting Loteria Night, and that's like bingo. And it's tomorrow in Alberg Hall, room 200, and at 7 p.m. if y'all can make it. Senator Mounts. Two more fun events that we have coming up. I guess you can call them fun. Uh, so there is free HIV testing uh, October the 1st uh, in the RSC starting at 1 p.m. Get tested. It's important. HIV is very, very dangerous. Um, and then the other thing is we have another diversity lecture series coming up sponsored by ODI. We've had a lot recently. This one's going to be Thursday, October 10th in the CAC Theater. It is the Art of Code Switching presented by Harold Wallace III. I highly suggest you go. Any other remarks and announcements? Senator Wing. Can I just uh, ask uh, DPR to like make the Facebook group like post a shareable because like a lot of things lately being sh it's, it's been very hard to share because it's unshareable yeah so are you talking about our um wichita state student government page or 62nd session page 60 62nd okay so that one has to go through nancy and i we were meaning to talk to her about that last week but um we will definitely get that approved and everything because you're admin on the page i can't do it so thank you and we'll get that worked also regarding that um if there's like a picture sent out that you want to share you can save the image like hold it and save the image and that's another way to i guess it's not to repost it but you can share it in any way you'd like any other remarks and announcements senator khan Hello, everyone. So, how many of you like Luke Bryan? Well, I, I'm glad there are people in the audience who like him. Well, 
student involvement is selling uh, Luke Bryan concert tickets for $25. And if you buy those same tickets, uh, you know, from Luke Bryan, Luke, they're $56 or more. So student discount helps. So go to student involvement and you can buy as many as you need. Bye. Any other remarks and announcements? You want to do yours next? Because I do have one. Okay. All right, so since Senator Day brought up Senator Hours, uh, I know I sent out an email last week telling you about all the submissions that I have gotten with all the corrections and whatnot that came after the fact. We, do, we did have 18 individuals not submit hours uh, last week, which you know is down from the 23 prior. So good on you guys for making a move in the right direction, but we still have a ways to go. So remember to submit them before 11.59 tonight. Any other remarks and announcements? Chief Lepesky. Okay, good evening, Senators. Um, so I have an announcement, um, and then questions can follow afterwards or after I present, I guess. Um, so earlier this evening, Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. Earlier this evening, I submitted, um, and President Miller accepted my letter of resignation. I don't know why I'm crying. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> um, effective tomorrow at 8 a.m. Um, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to serve as the associations. <laughs> I'm not good at quitting things, sorry. <laughs> um, associations, Chief of Operations, and for the trust you have placed in me and to be successful in this role. Um, this position has given me the opportunity to work in a platform that influences the student body and the privilege to learn about the operations of Student Government Association, along with the knowledge of how to com communicate within a team and manage time effectively. Um, however, after reflection and various conversations, I have realized that I feel as I am not the most qualified candidate for this position. Um, due to that, I've come to the decision that I will be stepping down due to additional time constraints and lack of experience within the government relations field. Um, however, I have a passion for this association, obviously. <laughs> um, Otherwise, I wouldn't give my time to it, and I would love to continue to be involved in a Senate. Um, my hope is to apply for a vacant um, at-large senator seat um, and to continue to serve students by serving as a senator within the 62nd session, as I promised to do. <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Um, this position has brought me to realize that I am a lot more passionate about what Senate does, what you guys do every day, um, than the current position I am in. I do not feel as though I am making the impact and influence on constituents in cabinet like I imagine and find myself knowing that I could do that as a Senate, as a Senate seat. Again, I want to reiterate that I do not see this as me quitting SGA, but I see this as giving someone else an opportunity to utilize the chief of operations role who has the adequate experience within Senate and also within the government relations field. And also giving myself the opportunity to learn and grow within the organization within the capacity I feel comfortable with. Again, I want to thank you all for the opportunity to serve as the association's chief of operations and out of respect of time, if you would like me to expand on my reasons, I stand for questions and also after a meeting as well. So. Thank you. <laughs> Are there any questions? You guys can ask any questions. It's really okay. Yeah. Thank you. Sorry, I was so emotional. Thanks, guys. <laughs> Are there any more remarks or announcements? Seeing none, I hereby close the meeting with a silent roll call at 8.17 p.m.